This video is dedicated to Borzikman's patron and friend, Rickamouse96. Borzikman also would like to express his appreciation to his other patrons and friends for their support and loyalty. Thank you guys, you are the best. Greetings my dear truth seekers. In this video, I would like to discuss with you a special topic that has been thrilling the minds of many people, causing controversy not only among conspiracy theorists, but even among the expert community. A genetic weapon is considered one of the varieties of biological weapons. These weapons are designed for selective destruction of the population, based on racial, ethnic, gender, or other genetically determined characteristics. Expert opinion regarding this weapon is divided. Some experts believe that the creation of a genetic weapon aimed at the selective defeat of ethnic groups is impossible even theoretically at the current stage of the development of science and technology. However, there are some experts who claim that genetic weapons exist, and these weapons are even being used by the special services of some countries for their own selfish gains. Interest in this topic began to grow after the words of Vladimir Putin. In 2017, during a meeting of the Human Rights Council, Putin declared that some foreign forces are collecting biological material of Russian citizens. That Putin statement caused an outbreak of emotional controversy in the media and social networks, with the participation of not only relevant scientists, but also ordinary people. In fairness, it should be noted that Putin's words are not without foundation. Back in the summer of 2017, the U.S. Air Force announced a tender on the official public procurement portal for the supply of 12 samples of ribonucleic acid molecules and synovial tissue of Russian citizens. According to the terms of the tender, donors must be citizens of the Russian Federation, Caucasians, without injuries of the musculoskeletal system, with negative tests for human immunodeficiency virus, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and syphilis. After Putin's statement, the Americans tried, if not to justify themselves, then at least to clarify this weird situation. The spokesman of Air Education and Training Command, Bo Downey, said that the department specialists are working to identify various biomarkers associated with injuries. For these studies, a contract for the purchase of ribonucleic acid molecules and synovial samples was published on July 19, 2017. Initially, the request didn't indicate the desired place of origin of the samples, but samples from Russia were required to continue the study, since the previous supplier provided biomaterials of Russian citizens. The lawyers explained the role of the Pentagon in this story by the formal departmental affiliation of the medical institution. My friends, these weird statements of the Americans have raised even more questions. Why could not the first batch of biomaterial be taken from the same American pilots, who are obliged to provide it simply by contract? After all, the Pentagon is going to treat the joints of American pilots and not Russian ones. I personally would like to look into the eyes of the original contractor who smuggled from the Russian Federation the Pentagon's order. Yes, it was the real smuggling. Indeed, back in 2007, the newspaper Commerçant declared that there was an unofficial ban on the export of biological samples in Russia. According to an anonymous source, the ban could be related to the FSB report on bioweapons and assumptions about the development of genetic weapons against the Russian population. Moreover, among Native Americans living on reservations, there are different opinions regarding the collection of their genetic samples in DNA banks by the U.S. government. Many Native Americans are convinced that government agencies can use DNA to wipe out certain cultural or ethnic groups, including with the help of genetic weapons. Against the backdrop of recent news, such statements don't seem so unfounded. It became known that the specialists of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency intend to deprive offspring of malarial mosquitoes and other insects that pose a danger to humans. It is planned to do this with the help of a drug, in other words, a virus, that affects reproductive function. The United Nations has already reacted to this, expressing concern that these technologies can be used for military purposes. The specialists of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency don't even hide that they are working on the development of genetic weapons. According to them, these weapons are being created against dangerous insects and rodents. However, many experts are confident that this weapon will be used for military purposes. 
Even worse, such technologies are already available not only to large states with their almost unlimited financial resources, but also to private laboratories that can be run by God knows who, including mentally unstable geniuses. Nearly the same things were with nuclear weapons. Back then, the Americans and Russians needed super expensive projects that all the brilliant minds were working on. And now, in the 21st century, everyone can easily create the so-called dirty bomb.